Hi everyone, welcome to our first lecture video on modern symbolic logic. Fundamentally, logic is a study of arguments, and we use logic all the time when we argue, and I don't really necessarily mean like two people like yelling at each other, I just mean when we're trying to convince someone of a point. Now, logic in the technical sense is an abstract study of arguments, so we're not actually interested in techniques of persuasion like rhetoric, we're actually interested in the sort of logical technical apparatus that makes arguments work. Now in this sense we're going to focus on very sort of like clean arguments and we're really only concerned that arguments that are made up of statements. So statements are a very special type of sentence, they're a particular kind of sentence, and these are sentences that have a truth value. So they are either true or false. So not all sentences have truth value. So it's really easy to come up with a statement, it's anything that's true or false, like it's raining outside, or I like cheesecake. These are examples of statements, they're either true or false. Now can you think of something that's not a statement, a sentence that is a non-statement? So this would be something that actually has no truth value to it at all. Well, you might sort of be struggling right now because I've sort of primed you to think about statements, but in fact there's lots. Uh, any sort of question is something that doesn't have a truth value, so how are you? that that's not true or false. Any sort of command like clean your room or go away, these things also aren't statements, they're not true or false. And any sort of random expression that we use for rhetorical sort of purposes like woo or yay or whatever, uh, these things also don't carry truth value. Now we can sort of see that why we only care about statements in arguments in a technical logic course because these non-statement things don't really add any genuine content to an argument. They might add rhetorical persuasiveness, but that's not what we're really interested in in this course. So what is an argument? Uh, broadly speaking, an argument is a collection of statements uh, where we have a set of statements called the premises that are meant to support the conclusion. And importantly, a argument has a goal. The goal is for you, or anyone I guess, to be convinced that the conclusion follows from the premises. Now what does follows from the premises mean? Well, actually it depends. There's lots of different ways to understand that, so we're going to become very precise on what it means to follow from the premises. Now there's actually a wide different uh, range of types of logic we can look at with respect to arguments. So this course is going to focus on deductive arguments. And deduct deductive arguments are like the gold standard, and the reason why is they have this property of certainty. At the conclusion of a good deductive argument is certain. And what that means is it necessarily follows from the premises. So we're really going to sort of come to terms with what that concept means. Now another type of reasoning that's really important is inductive reasoning, and there's also abductive reasoning. And not too many people know about abductive reasoning, but uh, this is sort of the reasoning style that you see all the time in, say, science, and actually in our regular everyday lives. So if you want to learn more about inductive and abductive reasoning, well, you're probably going to have to take another course. We really want to be able to assess what a good deductive argument is. The thing is, it's too sort of vague to talk about what is good. There's lots of ways to describe good that doesn't translate from one thing to another. A good piece of poetry is not the same as the sort of same standards as a good piece of art. So for logic, we have two senses of goodness when we assess deductive arguments. And those senses are validity and soundness, whether an argument is valid and whether an argument is sound. So we're going to focus on validity. Here's the definition of validity. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to sort of memorize this definition immediately. Eventually, you will know this definition very well, but the way that we're sort of going to understand and learn this concept is by looking at a lot of examples, and this is sort of going to be the way that we're going to proceed in the course regularly. Anyway, here's the definition. A deductive argument is valid if and only if, whenever the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Or, equivalently, another way of phrasing validity is that it is impossible for the premises to be true and for the conclusion to be false at the same time. So those two things can never happen. Now if you think about it a little bit, you'll realize that these two conditions are essentially the same. They're perfectly equivalent. Okay, let's look at an example of an argument. If it's raining, then the sidewalk is wet. It's raining, therefore the sidewalk is wet. Now this is a standard, very simple argument, and it has two premises, which I've sort of tagged off there, and a conclusion. The conclusion here is marked off by the word therefore, so that we know that that's meant to follow. 
Now the question we want to ask when we have this type of argument, and it's, it, and it's in a deductive form, uh, is whether or not it is valid or invalid. And remember, what we're asking is, if the premises are true, does the conclusion have to be true? Or equivalently, is it possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false? So take a second, think about it. Now, a lot of you will just be starting to think of counterexamples. Is it possible that it's raining and the sidewalk isn't wet? And of course, it is possible. Lots of you have seen examples of this because you've seen stores like this, which has a little awning out front so that if it's raining, the sidewalk isn't wet. So naturally, it seems that because of this, we can invoke this awning, that uh, this argument is invalid. It is actually possible for it to be raining and the sidewalk to be dry. We've actually seen that all the time in our lives. Unfortunately, that is not good reasoning, and it's actually not invalid. Now, the question is why? Why is this awning counterexample not good? Why does it actually not prove that this argument is invalid? Now, the reason why comes from the definition of validity. Validity says, if the premises are true, then the conclusion must be true. So what we need to make sure is that the premises are true. But we have a problem when we invoke the awning. The first sentence in this argument, the first statement, which is premise one, if it is raining, then the sidewalk is wet, essentially explicitly says, hey, you cannot have things like awnings in this world. So this is sort of a weird example, because essentially what it's saying is that for the premises to be true, the sidewalk always must get wet if it's raining. So we can't say that there's something stopping the sidewalk from getting wet, because that would actually make the first premise false. So when we assess validity, we need to ensure the premises are true. So if I make the premises true, if it's raining, then the sidewalk is wet, and it's raining, then it must be the case that the sidewalk is wet. There's no counterexample that we can think of. So in fact, this is a good argument in the sense that it is valid. Here's another example. If it's raining, then the sidewalk is wet. So the same first premise as before. But in the second premise, we're going to say, it's not raining. Therefore, the sidewalk is not wet. Is this valid or invalid? Assume that the premises are true. Does the conclusion follow? Or equivalently, is it possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion be false at the same time? If it is, then we have a problem and we can't say it's valid. Well, if we pause to think about it, we realize there's another good counterexample to this example as well. We've all seen reasons why a sidewalk is wet even though it's not raining, like this person who washes their sidewalk. That's a weird thing to do, but still lots of people like to do it. So if you wash your sidewalk, then it could be the case that it's not raining and the sidewalk is actually wet, which means the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So from this example, we can conclude that this argument is invalid. So you might be thinking that I've pulled something fishy here. Why is it that the washing the sidewalk counterexample worked, is okay, and showed that the argument is invalid, but the awning counterexample is somehow not okay? That one I said, oh, that doesn't show that the first argument is invalid. Well, the answer is all about keeping the premises true. When I invoked the washing of the sidewalk, that didn't render any of the premises of the argument false. It's still the case that if it rains, the sidewalk gets wet, and it's not raining. But the problem with the awning counterexample isn't the awning itself. It's the fact that by invoking it, I made the premises false, or at least one of the premises false. And you can't do that. So the test for validity is always the same. Make the premises true, force them to be true, and then see if the conclusion can be false. If it can be false, it means that the conclusion does not follow from the truth of the premises, and validity requires that. So a valid argument essentially preserves truth. If the premises are truth, it confers that truth down towards the conclusion. And what we sort of see is that validity is just about the form or the structure of the argument. It doesn't really matter so much what the content is. It's the actual structure that confers the truth forward to the conclusion. So here's a silly example. This beetle wind is nuzzling green or time. It is not nuzzling time, therefore it is nuzzling green. What does this mean? Who cares? I actually have no idea what it means. Now maybe I was studying some other sort of language or some other discipline. It might actually have meaning for all I know, but it doesn't matter. Even if I don't know what it means, I can still study it in terms of logical 
uh, a sort of technical nature and validity and answer the question, is this valid or invalid? So take a second, think about it, and the answer is, it's valid. Uh, why? Well, we'll actually come back to this one a little later. So not only is val validity only about form or structure, that means it's not about actual truth. It's about possible truth. So take a look at this argument. If unicorns roam U of T campus, then I will give you all 100%. Unicorns do roam the campus, so you all get perfect. Now, is this valid? Yeah. In fact, this has the exact same form as the very first argument we looked at. If it rains, then the sidewalk is wet. It's raining, therefore the sidewalk is wet. But what I'm trying to show you here is that we can say an argument is valid regardless of whether or not the premises are true. You don't actually care if the premises are actually true. You just make them true in some sort of possible world or in your mind or something like that. Essentially, it's a game of make-believe almost. Here's the definition of invalidity. I haven't actually explained what it means to be invalid. I've just invoked the word. But you can sort of imagine what it means based off the fact that it's the opposite of validity. So a deductive argument is invalid if it's not valid. That's pretty straightforward. But what that really means is that it is possible for premises to be true and the conclusion to be false at the same time. So a little tip is that it's often easier to test for invalidity, and that's actually what we did by trying to find those counterexamples. But this is really sort of like a weird way of phrasing it. Testing for invalidity is the exact same thing as testing for validity. So long as you know the definition of validity, you will always know how to test arguments. One thing you should have realized is because that the only thing that matters is the form and the structure and not the actual content, is that a really good way of looking at some arguments and trying to figure out if it's valid or invalid is to abstract the weird content away. So when I look at the beetle wind argument, how did I know it was valid? Well, I just sort of replaced it with general placeholders. So here's an example of a placeholder. What this argument really says is circle or square is true. And then not square. So square is not true. And the conclusion says, therefore, circle is true. And what I'm asking is, if the premises are true, so if it is genuinely the case that circle or square must be right and not square, does it follow that circle is true? And so you can replace this with any sort of other example. So if I say, I'll, I want fries or salad, but I don't want salad today, does that mean I want fries? Well, yeah. So it follows immediately when you sort of abstract away. This type of abstraction is really powerful and is essentially what we're going to do in this course. After this first unit, we're not really going to look at arguments like beetle winds or sidewalks raining. We're going to look at arguments purely in their abstract logical syntactical form. And there's lots of advantages to this because then we don't get bogged down in issues of real world meaning. We can really just focus and zero in on the abstract logical structure of statements.